So we just bought a flip house and today we're about to go check it out for the first time. So for anyone who doesn't know, I work with my fiance, Michelle, and we are full-time realtors. So being in this business, we come across opportunities all the time where we can buy a house to invest and flip it or rent it out. Um, so we came across a great property and we just closed yesterday. The seller was supposed to leave, um, but we kind of told her that she could leave some of her extra stuff because um, the house was really messy. She had a lot of stuff. Um, so we're about to go check it out. I figured I'd make this video, I'm gonna make a vlog series to show you what it's like to invest in real estate down here in South Florida, uh, the flipping process, the things you have to look out for. I'm gonna give you the five tips you need to know when you're buying a flip property. So super excited to show you this process and uh, let's go. Okay, so it wouldn't be a video of mine if I did not say this up front, so we're just gonna get it out of the way. We get so many calls, texts, and emails every single day from people who are making a move to South Florida, whether they're relocating from another part of the country or they already live down here and they're looking to upgrade, downgrade. So if you're thinking about buying in South Florida, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. You can even send a smoke signal or carrier pigeon. However you wanna communicate, we got your back when moving to South Florida. So tip number one in buying an investment property to flip is finding the deal. This is typically one of the hardest parts about flipping property. The market here in South Florida for the last couple of years has been really, really hot, especially right now. Uh, we're in the beginning of September of 2020, so COVID's still going on, but the market for single family homes has been extremely hot. Um, there's people moving from all over the country down here. So there's a really high demand for single family homes right now for people to get their space and social distance. So it's pretty difficult to find a deal. So you have to be able to find something. Typically once the home hits the, the open market on the multiple listing service, uh, there's multiple offers in a matter of days. So this property that we are about to go see, uh, there was I think 17 or 18 offers in the first 48 hours that we were able to beat out. Um, so it's extremely competitive. You have to make sure obviously you're not overpaying when you're buying a flip because if you can't make any money after you sell it, then obviously you wasted a lot of time and took on a lot of risk for nothing. So you gotta make sure you find a deal. So the story on this one, Michelle and I were looking for a buyer. We had a search set up that was customized for them. They were looking in this neighborhood for something that was a little bit more move in ready. Um, so this property came up and Michelle and I took a look at it and we said, for the price, this is perfect. It's, it's an excellent flip opportunity. Um, so we wrote an offer sight unseen and the listing agent said, no, 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 you gotta go in and actually see the property. So we said, fine, we, we walk in. There was a line out the door of people waiting to see this property just because of the price. Now, obviously the home needed a lot of work. It wasn't for everyone, but you know, if for that price in this area, you know, it's not a high-end neighborhood, but the schools are really good. It's a very desirable neighborhood because of the price point and the excellent schools. Um, so there was stiff, stiff competition. So we had to write a very strong offer. Um, I actually had to go in there and I schmoozed the seller a little bit. You know, I tried to build a rapport and make sure she, you know, have her like me because at the end of the day it worked. Uh, it got our offer accepted among the competition just because I spoke to her, I tried to make buddy-buddy and friends with her, um, and it was able to make us win the deal. So it's really important to be able to have those networking and, and uh, communication skills sometimes to, to get these deals to happen. Tip number two in buying a flip property is you have to be able to know how you're gonna finance the deal. So typically, and it would be the case with this property, it was in really rough shape. So banks, a traditional mortgage, wouldn't really work for this. You would have to get either some sort of renovation loan, but realistically, a property in this kind of condition and someone who's trying to sell it as is and just get out of the deal, which is what you're looking for with a flip, uh, they're gonna be looking for a cash deal. So you can either have real cash, you know, actual money that you're sitting in your bank account to, to buy the house with, or what a lot of people do is they get hard money, which is in a sense a mortgage, but not in the traditional way that you would go into your bank or to a traditional mortgage broker and get a mortgage. So hard money really means it's a private mortgage. Typically how that works, you're paying a certain percentage of the amount you're borrowing upfront in points. So typically it's somewhere around one to two points and then a very, very high interest for the time that you borrow in the loan. So somewhere close to 10%. So this can be a very, very expensive way to do it. Uh, so you have to make sure that you have your connections lined up for your hard money or you have cash or whatever it may be. Um, you have to have that lined up up front. Having the cash was what was able to help us win the deal. The seller knew that they didn't have to deal with a regular mortgage and they didn't have to deal with hard money or anything like that. Um, so it's important to have that lined up ahead of time. Tip number three when you're flipping a property is to call the right people. You have to know who to call 
to do the job. So we are not full-time investors, Michelle and I. We are full-time realtors. In 2020, we're gonna sell a little north of 100 homes. So uh, part of what makes a good realtor a good realtor is having a Rolodex of people who we can call to get jobs done for our clients if they need. So having a good electrician, a good plumber, a landscaper, things like that, we have a, a huge Rolodex of people. So you have to make sure you know who to call to do the work and to do it correctly because the worst thing you can do is to fix up a home, do it you know, really cheap and crappy, and then when you go to sell it, the buyers don't see the value. They want to go redo all the work that you just did. Um, so the first person we called today is Ari Zimmerman of Zimmerman Tree Service. They run a huge tree service company here in Boca. Ari's a very good friend of mine. So we're going to show him around the outside of the house, show him what we want him to do, and then we'll give you a tour of the inside. So we got Ari here. <laughs> um, so we're going to walk around the outside, so you just kind of follow me around, and we're going to show Ari what, uh, what we got on the outside and what he's going to do. So this tree that's here, it's not really on top of the property, but I kind of want to trim it up a little bit, like over here, um, yeah. just get it, you know, so it looks a little bit better. The palms that are here, the, the front, I don't, like just a couple fronds that are touching here. Um, so if we can trim those up, and then let's go around back, and I'll show you the real, the real reason you're here. Same thing. This tree here, just you know, cut yeah, it up. It so it's needs a little bit of yeah, no, nothing crazy. Just yep. get get it away from the house. Yep. So this beautiful tree over here is something I'm hoping you could help me with. So I have no idea what it is or why it's here or why it looks so ugly, but I think that if you took this whole thing out and we just put sod, um, it's going to make the whole backyard look a lot bigger. I agree. All these bushes, like the, the ficus trees and whatever, yeah. the hell, whatever the heck this thing is, yeah, let's just take it if we can get it all out, whoever's going to come in here and buy this is most likely going to put a new fence and they can pick whatever landscaping and stuff they want. I just want to make the, the yard look uh, bigger and clean and yeah, uh, yeah. so something you can handle? Yeah, for sure. Perfect. For sure. So that's landscaping. Uh, can't wait to show you guys the inside. That's coming soon. So part of this deal for the house that Michelle and I bought uh, was the seller was somewhat of a hoarder, and I use that term you know, in the most polite way possible, but she had stuff piled from floor to ceiling in the entire house. Um, when we went there, she said this was clean, and part of getting the deal done was us allowing her to leave some of the stuff that she couldn't take behind, couldn't take with her. Uh, we told her she could leave some of it in the house, it wasn't a big deal, so this is her first time seeing it. So we're a little bit scared, very excited, and we'll give you the tour and kind of show you the beginning, what it looks like now, and what we're going to do to the house uh, when it's finished. So come on in. Oh dear lord. <laughs> so she obviously left some stuff here. Um, when we first saw this house, it was piled to the brim, like I said, floor to ceiling. There was only a pathway from the door here where you could walk to the dining room. Um, everything else was covered in stuff. So she clearly left some stuff, but that's okay. Oh wow. All right, so let me give you the two minute tour. This wall that you see right when you walk in here, so we're gonna open this wall up completely. Um, so right when you walk in, there's nothing here, there's nothing on this side. It's gonna give it a, a really open feel. Um, and I think that's gonna make the house look a lot bigger. This house is only, it's a little under 1400 square feet under air. So opening up as much as possible, making it feel bigger is gonna go a long way with adding value to the property. And that's gonna bring me to tip number four, which is knowing what things cost. So we talked about having a vendor list of people who you can call electricians, plumbers, you know, landscapers, stuff like that. Um, by doing this so often, and you know, we've flipped a couple properties uh, over you know, the last couple of years, we got to know what things cost. So when you're going in to buy a house, you have to know, hey, it's going to cost me X number of dollars to do the kitchen. It's going to cost me X number of dollars to do the floors. So we got quotes and bids ahead of time that confirmed the numbers that we, you know, we thought we were going to have to spend. But you have to know what it is you're going into. You can't go in there blind because sometimes, you know, and it's happened to me before, you go in, you over improve a property, or you, you didn't budget for this, you didn't budget for the electric or the plumbing, and you end up over improving or spending too much money, and then you don't make a profit. So you gotta be very careful. You wanna improve and spend money where it's necessary, uh, but not where it's not, and you have to know what things cost. So that's tip number three. Let's keep going on with the, with the tour here. So this wall originally was completely closed like this in the original floor plan. So we're gonna reclose it back off. We're gonna take off all this beautiful 70s paneling. Um, so this was a hallway that led you to all the bedrooms. We're gonna turn it back into a hallway, but come on in, we'll show you what they did here. So this is the bathroom. So we're gonna redo this bathroom with new tile, new you know showers, new vanities, tubs, flooring, the whole thing. This bedroom, if you look up here, you can see originally the floor plan had it as a real bedroom up to here. So we're gonna square the wall back off again. And then this was a linen closet. So we're gonna put the closet back. 
Originally, this was a hallway. So if you come this way, I'm standing in where the hallway was. So we're going to put the hallway back to make it, you know, the original floor plan. This is a family neighborhood. So to have it set up the way that it currently is, it's more like a two bedroom, two bath with a office kind of area. And this is originally a three bed, two bath. So we're gonna turn it back into that more traditional floor plan so a good family can enjoy it. We got a roof leak here. We're gonna replace the roof. That's, the, that's one of the first things we're doing. So I already called the roofer. We got bids for the roof. Uh, we're signing all the paperwork today to get that started. So that process is gonna get started soon. We're gonna replace the whole roof and fix all the, the ceiling areas where it needs to be fixed. Again, like I said, we're taking all this wall out. This is gonna remain the dining room. And let's go over to the kitchen, which is gonna be awesome. So in this room here, we're moving the fridge from where it currently is over here, over to this spot here. And we're gonna take that top half of the wall and cut it out so it's gonna feel much more open. Uh, we're gonna do cabinets on the bottom. This whole peninsula here, this bad boy is coming out and uh, to make up for the lost cabinet space that we're losing with this, we're putting a pantry over here and another set of uppers and lowers, uh, like a coffee bar type of thing. And it's gonna end up coming even to where this window is. Um, so we're just gonna extend the kitchen to make sure we don't have any lost cabinet space. And then this room that you're currently standing in, this is going to be like an eat-in kitchen area. Originally this is a family room, but it's just too small, it doesn't really suit today's needs as a family room. So we're gonna have this as an eat-in kitchen area and have the main family room be out there towards the front. Um, this wall out here, because we're gonna cut it up and we're going to bring it back to as far as we can, so probably here. So by removing this wall to here and taking this wall out, it's gonna feel much bigger, much more open. And we think that's what the, the next buyer is really gonna like. So where I'm standing right now, this is the master bedroom. This is the guest bedroom. And this was where the hallway, like I was saying, originally was. So we're gonna turn this back into a hallway. So they put a linen closet here, which you know, I guess is fine, but this is a family neighborhood. So we're gonna make this the hallway again. And they put a closet right here. This was, again, the hallway. Is there a light in here? No light. That could have been very dangerous. I could have easily electrocuted myself with how this house looks. Um, so we're gonna make this the hallway again, and then the closet is going to end up going right here. It's gonna be a small walk-in closet. This is where it originally was, so we're gonna put it back to its original floor plan. Look at this beautiful light fixture. <laughs> we got another big walk-in closet in the master here, and then you got the master bathroom. So you can see, we're gonna do the same thing in this bathroom. New vanity, new floors. Uh, we're gonna redo all the tile in the shower and uh, really give it a whole new look. It's gonna be very modern. We're going with like the white marble kind of look. Um, so it's gonna look much different than this. And now let's come outside. Wow, she, there's so much stuff here. So all this stuff is obviously gonna be gone. We're going to put the screens back in, in the, the porch area here, put a new door up. Um, but you got a really big lot. So one of the things that I really liked when we were buying this house, when we first saw it, was the lot size. So we're almost 11,000 square feet of lot here. Most of the homes in this neighborhood are only about 7,000 square feet. So you get much more space here. And because it's a family friendly neighborhood, I think that's really gonna be what sells this house to the next buyer is having a lot of yard space here. So their kids can play, they can have the slip and slide, they can play soccer over here, the whole thing. Um, I think that's really gonna be the selling feature. We got very lucky. The home has a pool. It's really desirable in this area. And the pool is in pretty excellent condition. So we really don't have to do much to the pool. Um, that's pretty lucky. And that's about it. There's really nothing else that we can save in this house. So it's gonna be a, uh, a huge project and uh, looking forward to showing you the results. So tip number five when you're flipping a property is to know what your exit strategy is. So you have to be able to know, are you gonna sell it or are you gonna rent it out after? So when you're selling the property, which is what we're actually gonna do, you have to make sure there's enough money as a profit left over from what you bought it for plus what you put into it to renovate the property. And then, you know, there should obviously be a profit from what you sell it for. You have to keep in mind that there are closing costs when you buy it and closing costs when you sell it. So you have to make sure that you're factoring in, in your final numbers, the closing costs to sell. Uh, there's also what's called the Burr method if you wanted to rent it out and have it as a, uh, a cash flowing investment property. So Burr stands for buy, renovate, rent out and refinance. So you take on a mortgage, you refinance it, you pull all your cash out, you leave some equity in the property, and then you have your tenant paying your mortgage every single month and you get a cash flowing investment property. That's not the method that we wanna use. We wanna get in and out, hopefully in less than 90 days from start to finish. 
um, and sell it and be done and hopefully make a good, a good profit. So uh, this was vlog episode number one of our flipping a house project. Super excited to show you the property and I cannot wait to show you the finished product.